Preeti, who shares her screen. Uh, Preeti was our star student because she did residency in our hospital. She has done a fellowship in pediatric ophthalmology as well as neuro ophthalmology. And uh, she's, her areas of special interest is uh, pediatric uh, neuro ophthalmic disorders. Uh, Preeti, over to you. Thank you. Yeah, so um, at the outset, I just wanted to say thank you to um, Dr. Sumita, uh, Dr. TSS, sir, AIOS, and um, the Asia Pacific Society for the opportunity to speak here today. Uh, so I'm going to speak a little bit um, about pediatric optic neuritis. This is not okay. So I have no financial disclosures. And we'll start this with a case of a 16 year old boy who actually came to us with history of decrease in vision in his right eye for the last 10 days. He has some mild pain in his right eye, no fever, no other relevant ocular or systemic history. His vision in his right eye was counting fingers uh, at uh, about a meter. Um, the left eye all good. Uh, he had an afferent pupillary defect, full motility, and the rest of his exam was pretty normal. This is what his fundus looked like. This is the optic nerve picture in the right eye. And you can see this is a pretty full, swollen, congested looking nerve. So the provisional diagnosis at this point is optic neuritis of the right eye. And we went ahead with an MRI of the brain and orbits. Um, and you can see here uh, on uh, post contrast, the enhancement of the right optic nerve as compared to the left. So pediatric optic neuritis, what is it? It is, it is the inflammation of the optic nerve. It could be demyelination or idiopathic. It may be isolated or associated with other systemic disease. It is a clinical diagnosis based on symptoms like loss of vision, eye pain. Uh, the optic nerve though may be swollen or it could be normal when it's a retrobulbar uh, variant. Uh, and the MRI shows contrast enhancement of the nerves with or without other um, lesions. Optic neuritis per se is rare in children, and there the are various studies based on the geographic area, uh, but the incidence is thought to be around about 0.2 per 100,000. Uh, it accounts for 25% of all demyelinating episodes in kids. It may occur as an isolated event or may be associated with other diseases, and we'll come to that. The mean age of presentation is about 9 to 11 years. Um, there is no gender predilection when you look at kids in the prepubertal age group, uh, but in the postpubertal age group, there is a female predilection similar to that seen in adults. But then how does it differ from that in adults? Um, it presents with acute or subacute vision loss like that in adults. However, um, a vast majority, 70 to 85 percent, present with visual acuity of 2200 or worse. Uh, which is unlike that in adults, uh, it's more likely to present with bilateral vision loss, more likely to have optic nerve swelling uh, in up to 70%, 75% in some studies. Um, pain and eye movements, which is thought to be very typical uh, for the ONTT in adults uh, of optic neuritis, is seen in only about half of the kids who present uh, with optic neuritis. Uh, and they typically have a better recovery compared to that in adults. Uh, let's look at some of the subtypes of neuritis in children. Now, optic neuritis may be seen post-vaccination, and the mechanism here is really thought to be a demyelination process that's stimulated by the virus rather than direct infiltration from the virus. Uh, it's been reported after infections such as adenovirus, mumps, measles, rubella, pertussis, um, and also after vaccines like hepatitis B, diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, um, and now um, after the COVID vaccine as well uh, in adults. Uh, another form um, that it may be associated with is called ADEM or acute disseminated encephalomyelitis. It is a polyfocal acute demyelinating syndrome with encephalopathy. It typically presents in the prepubertal age. It's typically monophasic and often follows a viral infection or vaccination. Unlike MS, however, it presents with encephalopathy, seizures, fever, headache, uh, and meningeal signs. The MRI in this case will show T2 and flare hyperintense white matter lesions. Often these are large confluent lesions greater than one to two centimeters, unlike that in MS, um, and they're poorly defined. 
MS, as we all know, uh, is another common association of uh, optic neuritis, especially in adults. Uh, it's a primary demyelinating disorder characterized by T2 hyperintense lesions of the white matter that are disseminated in time and space. There are, of course, specific diagnostic criteria, and I'm not going into those details. Uh, but optic neuritis may be the presenting feature of pediatric multiple sclerosis in about 22% of patients. And the risk factor for development of MS or for optic neuritis in kids uh, has been associated to be uh, with increased age at presentation. So the older you are when you present with optic neuritis, the higher the chances that you might have MS. Uh, the presence of brain, uh, other brain abnormalities other than the optic nerve recurrences and the presence of oligoclonal bands in the CSF. Uh, and these, this is an MRI showing the typical uh, periventricular white matter lesions that you would see uh, in MS. That brings us to our second case. So this is a 13 year old who now came to us with a left eye vision loss for about five days, no other relevant history. The vision in the left eye was counting fingers, uh, an afferent pupillary defect, the fundus was within normal limits, anterior segment was normal. This is the MRI and you can see here that there is uh, this hyperintensity in the nerve, uh, which then is a contrast enhancement, uh, post-contrast scans here. And when you trace the nerve back, all the way back, almost up to the chiasm, you can still see the nerve um, enhancing. That's the one there. So we went ahead and treated with IV methylprednisolone and recovered to about 2,200. Uh, further investigation, CSF and an NMO antibody was done, which was negative, was started on oral steroids, but presented three weeks later now with loss of vision in the right eye with pain on eye movement. So now vision is about 2,200 both eyes. Uh, this is the fundus picture at this point, and you can see the left nerve is beginning to look a little pale. Uh, the right still looks pretty healthy. So now with the second eye involvement, we did rethink and thought maybe it's still NMO. So we got an MRI spine, which was normal. We did another dose of IV methylpred. The vision got a little better, started on rituximab with our pediatric neurologist being involved. After six months, now the vision has improved quite a bit and we repeat tested for aquaporin-4. Now it turns out positive. So that brings us to this entity, which is neuromyelitis optica or NMO which is another association of optic neuritis in kids. It's a severe autoimmune disease characterized by recurrent inflammatory events, primarily involving the optic nerve and the spinal cord. Traditionally, it was thought as a monophasic disease uh, with simultaneous neuritis and transverse myelitis, but now uh, we've realized that it can be polyphasic. And the identification of an autoimmune antibody targeted specifically against the aquaporin water channel is highly specific for NMO. In 2015, the terms NMO and NMO spectrum disorder were unified and some additional criteria have now been developed for zero negative NMO where the aquaporin is negative. Pediatric NMO accounts for about three to 5% of all cases. It could be the first clinical event in even three fourths of a patient. So we may be the first ones really seeing these kids. Uh, transverse myelitis may be seen in about half either alone or in combination. Um, and it has been uh, seen after certain infections as well. Pediatric NMO, the brain lesions typically appear more often in antibody positive cases. They're usually large and they localize to areas of high aquaporin-4 expression, which is regions of um, the third and fourth ventricles, uh, the brainstem, the supratentorial uh, and infratentorial white matter and cerebellum. The involvement of optic nerve in these cases, though, is very typical. It's a high signal longitudinal lesion, which involves over half of the optic nerve length. So it's large segment involvement of the optic nerve, uh, frequently extending into the optic chiasm. Um, and the, the, you will, of course, see optic atrophy in the chronic phase. Another um, relatively newer uh, disease that we now deal with is called MOG, or myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein uh, antibody disease. This is a pretty broad spectrum and it has multiple clinical phenotypes. It's usually monophasic, but it could be multiphasic as well. Um, it could have isolated optic neuritis or an ADAM-like picture. Uh, MOG positive antibodies have been reported in 17 to up to 50% of uh, pediatric optic neuritis studies. It typically has bilateral optic nerve involvement in more than 80% 
optic nerve edema is more common so as compared to the retrobulbar variety it is uh, also longitudinally expensive uh, but typically spares the chiasm unlike uh, nmo and it has a better visual prognosis so this is typically how the the, the nerve looks here there's a perineural sheath um, involvement uh, and then a longitudinal uh, extensive lesion now, the typical workup in your cases of pediatric neuro optic neuritis would, of course, um, include a complete eye exam with fundus photos, OCT where possible, fields, uh, and a VEP may really help, especially in very young kids where you're unable to assess the visual function. An MRI brain uh, and orbits with contrast, a CSF analysis, the NMO workup for NMO and MOG antibodies, an infectious workup, and an inflammatory workup to rule out other causes. Management, and I can't stress this enough, is truly a team approach with the neuroophthalmologist, the neurologist, and the neuroimmunologist um, being involved. Most acute attacks are typically treated with IVMP or IV methyl PRED. Uh, in addition, for NMO uh, or where you get poor response, a plasma exchange or IVIG uh, is recommended uh, at the get go. Um, in NMO, um, agents, uh, long-term immunosuppression uh, is, is almost always required, and agents tried include azathioprine, mycophenolate, mofetil, and rituximab. There are newer um, monoclonal antibodies as well. Uh, certain, uh, of course, are limited by their availability. MS, as we know, disease-modifying agents have been used uh, and should be started right away in consultation with a neuroimmunologist. In MOG, typically um, IVMP followed by a pretty long prolonged steroid taper, because these cases, we have to remember, are prone to recurrences if, if the steroid is tapered too quickly. Um, and uh, MS, of course, like I mentioned, uh, the disease-modifying agents. So just to sum up, the take-home points would be that pediatric optic neuritis is uh, largely a clinical diagnosis. You must investigate appropriately to find out if there is an underlying condition. Uh, a team approach uh, is essential for appropriate management and a close follow-up to watch for recurrences or further. <laughs>